Hey, I appreciate the invitation to be here today. I've certainly enjoyed the presentations and actually meeting a lot of uh, you for the first time. Um, so I know that I'm standing between you and lunch. <laughs> and having worked in shelters and doing these uh, tests for adoptions, you know, part of that testing is uh, food aggression. <laughs> so I can't recognize it. I would just invite you to just go ahead and we'll, we'll come along later. <laughs> no biting. Uh, also, people should know you never invite a veterinarian to talk around the time you're eating. We are notorious for talking about very um, in interesting things <laughs> over the dinner table. Our families are fine with it, but uh, I'm just warning you. I have to talk about some things that uh, may or may not settle well with you. I'm reminded of uh, the days when my dad was practicing in Oklahoma. He had a mixed practice, and, and of course I had one out there. My first practice was in Oklahoma. And, um, you know, there were, a lot of, there were a lot of beef cattle out in Oklahoma. And typically when you're going out to see a problem with beef cattle, um, he would say something like, well, um, we're going to go out here and check these cows so that uh, we can tell the owner what's wrong with them. But I learned also that whenever we were going to see a, a horse, it was like, well, we're going to go out here and check this horse so the horse owner can tell us what we're supposed to do for her. <laughs> So I want to say, um, when I get this presentation, just uh, cut me a little slack. I know you know a few things I probably don't know. I heard earlier this puzzling question, you know, how, how can this be still going on after so many years? And it's not puzzling to me. Uh, I'm an American. I love my country. I served my country in the uniform for 23 years, honorably retiring as a rear admiral, which I think says something. But, well, thank you. That's not why I was going to say that, though. I was going to soften the blow that's coming next. The United States of America, from its very beginning, has practiced exploitation. Now, I know we don't like to hear that as Americans, but if we're talking about a serious subject, and I'm here advocating for horses at this meeting, so I don't care about your feelings when it comes to being truthful about what facet of our world are we looking at here. We've always had people who would exploit others, other people and animals. And so that's what this is, it's exploitation. Uh, there are a lot of things that drive that, whether it's greed or you name it. So all of the evidence and all of the other things that we say, well, it's sitting right there. It's obvious. Well, we've always had those, too, during periods of exploitation. So um, I come at it from that angle. Nothing surprises me. Um, when I think of what people are capable of doing, and especially to um, someone or an animal that is, uh, is innocent and can be subjected to their power and control. One other thing I'd like to just mention, and hopefully you'll take that away from this meeting, uh, the word soar or soaring is uh, problematic. Now, at my age, just waking up and getting out of bed, I know what sore means. You know, uh, I played a little sport, and, and, and I know what it means to be sore. What we're talking about here, folks, is not that kind of sore. And what I will cover here is not about something that goes on on the surface. This thing is quite sensitive. Um, let's see. Okay, but which one is the pointer? 
I'm sorry, center. Center is the pointer. Okay, so crude anatomy. We've been seeing images of the horse's foot, external images, uh, actual photographs, we've seen radiographs, we've seen thermographs. Uh, let's look at uh, a different kind of image here. And basically what you have is an animal, a beautiful animal, huge animal that stands on its middle digit. It walks on its tiptoes. And that's a feat when you think about it. Anybody in here been a ballerina? Okay. Well, they can tell you what that feels like when you have normal digits. If you'll look at this image, you'll notice that it's a tight packet. It's a tight package. Um, there are a bunch of structures in here. Some are tendons or ligaments, and then you've got, uh, you know, other types of tissue, bony tissue and so forth. You've got skin over and you've got this uh, hoof wall that's very, very rigid. It's well designed, just like it is. It's well designed. It's like your foot as a normal foot with an ankle and all that articulates properly, well designed. What we don't often think about is how does the blood which is pumped down in here through the arterial system get back up because you've got gravity that wants to keep it down in that hoof. Well, well designed. There is a system whereby the blood can actually be pumped back up out of that hoof. Speaking of, of that system, how does that foot stay in the hoof to start with? Well, it's, an, it's a fascinating anatomical structure. So you got the bone, the coffin bone, sitting inside this hard wall structure called a hoof, and something has to adhere them. And it's a structure that's kind of interleaved like this, from, from the bone side to the hoof side. And it's not bone against bone. You've got delicate tissues that are all cover all of these surfaces, but it's very tight, well designed. This is what it looks like when you take the hoof off of that foot. These, these structures you see here are what I'm talking about. A little different arrangement around the band area here, but you get, you get the point. Delicate tissues separating bone from very hard hoof wall with not a lot of space. Well, <clears throat> it's already been covered quite well that, you know, soaring involves a number of evil designs and techniques. But what is it all about? This was mentioned by Dr. Salk. It's about creating inflammation. And let me just spend just a few moments to talk about what inflammation is. And everybody in this room has experienced this. And what we're trying to do now is take your reality and connect your reality about pain and about inflammation with what a horse is probably feeling and experiencing when they have an injury whether it was intentional or not. So we start out with damage done to the sails. That could be something caustic placed on the pa uh, pastern. It could be the fact that pressure is applied and crushing some tissues, these delicate tissues inside the hoof. We could go on and on, but you do some damage to the sails. This is akin to, let's say you just cut your finger a little bit on a broken glass. Well, the body goes through a determined and predictable sequence of responses to that injury. And it does it because it's trying to survive. It's saying, oops, we got a problem. We're going to have to fix this. We're going to have to address this in order to make sure we don't break down in nature. First thing that happens is a bunch of chemicals get released. 
Now these chemicals are there, there are various ones for different reasons, but I'll cover what the key ones here are. There are chemicals that will cause the blood vessels to start to dilate. Now we see that in a physiological way, if a person blushes, you know, capillaries have dilated and, and it's, it's obvious that they are embarrassed or something. But we also see it when we suffer an injury and, and the area starts to look red and through time it starts to get hotter. I'm sorry if you can't read these, the words here. But the blood vessels have to dilate in order to increase the blood flow. Why do you want to increase the blood flow? Because there's an injury, the body is going to have to bring cells to that area to start repairing itself. It's not going to say, oh, these guys just soared me this time. We'll skip this, uh, this step. No, it has to do that. It has to bring the cells in to start repairing. The capillaries, these are the very small vessels. So they get down to a microscopic size, maybe no wider than a red blood cell, about seven microns, very small. These things start to leak. Now they don't normally leak. They, they are kind of sealed, the walls are sealed in a, in, in a sense, but these walls start to have pores that will allow things to leak out of the vessel. And what leaks out, of course, is a fluid that causes what we call edema, which is a swelling. Uh, proteins intended to clot, if you've got an open bleeding area, oh, and by the way, this same external process is going on internally. We're trying to see into the foot and into that area that's been damaged, what's actually happening. It's trying to go in and clot any leakage that may be going on in order to not hemorrhage very much. Well, when you get swelling, you're going to get pain. Well, why do we get pain when, we, when, when there's swelling? Anybody? Not the, not the veterinarians. Pardon? Yes, because everywhere blood vessels are flowing, we also have nerve fibers uh, coursing. And these are generally sensory nerves. They pick up sensations. And I can tell you, a hoof is just like a tooth. It wants really friendly, nice sensations because it only knows two. No sensation to speak of, if you, if you don't have a toothache, you understand what I'm saying, you know, we don't think about our teeth because they're happy. And they go from that to being very unhappy, all in a heartbeat, I'll come back to that. So yeah, the pain is a result of the swelling. Do you remember that little structure we talked about? Do you remember that image back there I showed you the anatomy and how tight everything is? Folks, there's not a lot of room for swelling. If I were to bang my forehead, I could get a golf ball sized knot. And my brain is fine because it's on this side of my cranium. But guess what if I got that same swelling inside my cranium? I could die actually. Because whenever there is a solid wall, and we have two structures in our body that we can relate to. We've got our tooth and we've got our cranium. You've got something sensitive inside of those that can swell if they're damaged. And if they swell, there is no expansion. The hoof wall won't just suddenly start expanding. It tightens up in there. You get this pressure build up. And when that pressure builds up, there is pain. Um, the only other thing that's not shown here clearly is what we call the five, these are the five signs of inflammation. You get redness. You get heat, you get pain, you get swelling, and the fifth one is loss or reduction of function. Now, why do we lose function? Well, first of all, it hurts. But in order to heal properly, the signal down at my foot says to the brain, hey man, we don't need to be walking too far today. 
because we've got some work down here to do. So it's best that you sit down, but if you gotta move, you, you move by picking that foot up real quickly. Let's don't put any weight on it because we're trying to repair things down here. The same thing is happening in that horse's foot. Are we, are we together? Okay. So this is about inflammation. And inflammation, by definition, is about pain. And I don't mean sore pain, especially given the sight. You know, I had to look up some images. I, I, I don't like watching images of humans with things like that. I could look at animals all day long, but there's something nasty about humans. When, when <laughs> I don't know what it is. How many think that's sore? How do you know that's sore? I mean, did you talk to this guy? I think it's a guy, right? We pick up a lot by our vision, by, by our sight. You think it's sore? Is it swollen? Mm -hmm. Have you ever had anything like that? Uh huh. And, and what happens if I press on it? What do you think if I was walking on that digit? Now, now, before you answer, this nail has to be much thicker and it has to pretty much completely surround the fingertip. And now we're going to do a handstand. Folks, that's not sore. That hurts. That hurts. Uh, oops. See, that's just nasty. You know? <laughs> I sure hope that person's doing all right. But. That's sore. Now, we can see this on this human. And I didn't use a black person, because we, we wanted to see. <laughs> and we got this melanin that won't let you see everything, right? That's the problem with the horse. They got hair, and they've got skin coloration. We want to see what it looks like when something gets inflamed and it's swollen. And that's what's going on at that pasture and on down. And worse yet, because of gravity, if you do something at the pasture, gravity will cause the fluid to slowly gravitate into the area of the hoof. And you still get pressure buildup. So how many have had a toothache? Let me see your hands, really. Wow, I've never had one of those. <laughs> But I'm a child of the, I'm a baby boomer, so I've got all the metal and everything going on. We didn't have fluoride. <laughs> Guys, I understand that hurts. And as I mentioned a moment ago, the thing about a tooth, which is much like a hoof, you've got this very rigid wall that actually sits in bone. Very similar, you've got these two hard structures with a very delicate tissue that separates the two structures. And when this pulp gets inflamed, for whatever reason, and that tooth starts to swell inside, there is pain. It's not sore. It pains. And it can pain with every heartbeat in some situations. I have no reason, based on my medical training, and again, my colleagues may correct me, uh, or the horse people, but I have no reason to believe that, uh, that the internal areas of a horse's hoof can become inflamed and they not feel an intense pain. So let's not fall victim of using that word soaring so loosely and rolling it out without, well, let's don't de become desensitized as to what we're talking about. It's beyond sore. Um, have you ever had a tooth abscess? You know, when we diagnose tooth abscesses, uh, especially in canine, like this tooth, 
oftentimes on a radiograph, all you see is a very faint area at the root of the tooth. In fact, I just saw a radiograph recently where normal eyes couldn't even pick up a change, yet there was a tooth abscess. And this, this animal's face was swollen up, okay? And so, again, doesn't take a whole lot. And when folks say, well, we're just doing this or we're just doing that, you gotta translate that into the inside where there's no room for things to be pushed around and squeezed. Um, so what does it really feel like? I think it feels like a combination of sensations. And it depends on the animal, it depends on what's been done, it depends on a number of factors. But if I translate that into human terms, let's start with this. This person has a burn. Now, if she were to do a handstand, she probably could get away with that. But any movement around that forearm where the skin gets stretched just a little bit, what do you think she would feel? It would hurt, wouldn't it? Now, this could be days after the burn, but until the body heals, there is going to be an uncomfortable sensation. Well, caustic agents definitely cause a burning and stinging uh, to occur. And it's not just on the skin, because how does the skin heal? The body has to bring these healing agents to the area. That's why you got this redness. That's why you have the swelling. This person was out doing something I never would like to do, and that's jogging, I guess. <laughs> but we've probably have experienced uh, a hurt ankle. And yeah, there's a there's a thing called a sore ankle, and then there's a sprained ankle or something that's really painful. Somewhere in the mix, I know these horses feel that. But why is, do I believe that? Because they have joints that extend right into the hoof itself, right? They're on that, that finger. Their coffin bone is our third phalanx there. And then you just go on up until you get into the pastern area. There are joints that operate there and they do flex when that horse walks normally. You get any inflammation in that joint and it may very well have the sensation of what a spraying ankle or a very painful ankle would feel like. This poor guy has a toothache and you already know what that feels like. But I understand when you get them, it's constant. It, it won't necessarily take time off. Now, you can eat something to inflame it further, but it's a constant pain. There are ligaments in the foot. There are ligaments and tendons that go down. And some of you may have had tennis elbow or tendonitis. But when these structures get inflamed, and they don't swell up like a big old golf ball, it doesn't take a whole lot. But when they do get inflamed, they hurt. And just a tiny amount of movement makes you hurt. I mean, to the extent that the number one category for drugs sold in this country are what? Pain medication. So we got people running around who don't like pain, which is understandable, and, and folks who will intentionally inflict that on an animal or another human being for, it, for gain is pretty sadistic. This person here has a blue nail. Now, again, I used a nail that wasn't painted, and you can see what's going on, right? Like, probably hit it with a hammer. Has anyone ever done that? I talked to an equine specialist recently, and that was her response. I think what they feel is like if you smashed your finger with the hammer, I'm wrapping up. Um, and that it throbs with every heartbeat. You know, at some point that thing is not just sore, it's hurting. And of course, there are a lot of backs among humans. Again, a type of pain that doesn't just come and go necessarily, it can be constant. And certain movements will just make it spike right up there. Okay, so wrapping up then, 
I think soaring causes multiple pains, and I think there are pains that humans can relate to. But you cannot do it by thinking of an arm. You got to think of a tooth with a rigid wall, and the inside can become inflamed and swell, and there is no place for the swelling to go. Same thing with your brain. And the brain starts swelling, you know, sometimes we have to drill a hole in there to relieve the pressure. Because if you don't, it kills the cells, some cells. And that's probably what happened to me. I had some cells killed <laughs> years ago. But I appreciate your, your attention, and I don't know that we, we still don't have time for qu questions. Is that right? Okay. Thank you.